Hello, this is Dr. Greg Goglin, Fair State University. We are going to go through creating a relational database design in Visio. And the database is going to be a student database. So when we go into Visio, we'll go into the new area. And the area we're looking for is the crow's foot database notation. If you do not see that on the initial screen, go into the software database area and it'll pop up in there. Don't care what the units are and we're ready to go. You'll see there's only a few things in the uh, work area and we're gonna grab an entity and you just click on it and drag it over with the mouse held down. And the entity is representative of the tables and we're going to create a student database and the first table we're going to create in the student database is going to be the student table so we'll click on that and let's call the table student and the primary key in a student database is going to be student id and we'll put in a couple of other fields or attributes, last name and first name. Now let's talk a little bit about what we have here. The blue area is the naming area for the entity and the entity is a table and it's called student. Now there is some debate whether it should be student table or students table. Uh, that's more of an academic exercise. We'll just call it the student table. The student ID is the unique identifier of the student records in the student table, and that's why it's a primary key. And you can see the PK on there. There's also this line, this dotted line. Everything above the dotted line would represent uh, the field or fields in the primary key. We have two other columns or attributes. One is last name and one is first name. I separated the name into separate columns. That's called atomic data. And the reason is we want to be able to reference or access data accurately um, and in the smallest unit available. So for example, if we combined last name and first name into a single field and called a name, it could be first name, last name, last name, comma, first name, first name, middle name, last name, uh, there might be a hyphenated name or a junior or senior or something like that on the end. So we'll just break it up, last name, first name. There would probably be more fields in this table, but we're gonna keep it simple at the moment. Now a student is gonna be able to take courses, so let's bring a course table over. So we grab the entity, drag it over, and let's call this entity course and the primary key for the course table let's call it course ID and then some of the attributes in that table how about a course name and a course description and I'm going to abbreviate description with DESC Let's talk briefly about some of the naming thoughts in the course table. You could just call it name instead of course name, and that would work perfectly fine. Uh, one thing you might consider, though, is name is a reserved word, and you may run into some ambiguous uh, messages if you're trying to write SQL with a uh, field that is called the same thing as a reserved word. Same with description, D-E-S-C is a reserved word in SQL. It means descending. So when you're sorting data and you sort of in descending order, you'd use D-E-S-C. And so you would also have some potential confusion there. Uh, you can get around that with brackets and so forth. But let's just for this example's purposes, let's just put course in front of it. So it's the name of the table and then the field. Notice I have a capital C and a capital N for course and name. We call that camel case, just like the animal with two humps. 
uh, first letter of each word or abbreviation is capitalized. So we're partway home. Let's talk about the relationships between the data. A student can take many courses and a course can have many students. So we have to figure out how are we going to make the relationship between the two tables. And there's several different ways and there are implications for each. What we could do is we could add another column or attribute in the course table and put in, didn't want to do that. We want to keep that as course. Change this to student ID, which is the key from the student table, and that would reference the student that is in the course. The problem is this course can only have one student because if you kind of mentally put some data in there, course number one, which is database 101, and a course description that talks about database 101, student ID 13. Well, if we wanted to also put in student ID 14, we'd have to create a whole other record and everything would be the same except for the student ID, and that's redundant data and all kinds of problems there. So the solution of putting a student ID into the course table doesn't really work, so we're going to delete that. We could also go the other way, and we could put a course ID into the student table, but we basically have the same problem. While it does define the relationship, the student can only go to one course because if you wanted to have them in a second course, you'd have to create a whole nother record and everything's the same except for the course ID. So that's a problem. So let's get rid of that as well. So what we have is a many-to-many -many relationship. One student can be in many courses. One course can have many students. Good way to solve that, let's call it a bridge table. So what we do with the bridge table is create the name of the table that is the same as the two tables you're joining, student course. Primary key is student and course ID, which are the two keys. We do not need the attributes at this point. Perhaps down the road we may want to add them back in, but right now we don't need them. So we have a student ID that points to a student ID here, a course ID that points to a course ID in the student course table. We go over the relationship piece and drag that over to draw our lines. And let me get the other one over there real quick. And what I'm going to do is do a right click on there, go to the styles in the line, more weight, and I'm going to go to about a three point so you can see it better. And I'll do that on both of them. Now you'll see the symbols on the ends of the lines, and that's the crow's feet. Uh, designation and it means relationship cardinality like one to many and so forth. For the purposes of this example, I'm going to just create plain lines. I don't want to get bogged down into too many things. So I'm just going to turn them into lines. So I'm going to go into the styles, back to the line area, arrows and no heads. We can do everything we need to in this example with just plain lines and the cardinality we're taking care of with our design anyway. Uh, subsequently we'll talk about them but we don't want to have too many topics to cover in one video. So that is the first portion. I have several other tables to add and I'm going to type them in and then bring the video back up.
There, through the magic of fast typing, I have completed the design that we're going to use for our example. So we have the student table that we initially started with, the course table, and the student course, which is a bridge table that allowed a student to enroll in many courses, and a course to have many students. One of the ways you can take a uh, bridge table uh, and figure out it's a bridge table in the designs that I do is just look in the name. If it's a double name and it's between two tables and it has the same name with the same keys, you know it's a bridge table for the many to many's. Same with a the student. They can have more than one major and the major um, then is only one type of a degree. So in other words, it's a Bachelor of Science or a Master of Science or something like that. So my degree type would be Bachelor's, Master's, etc. Um, over here, a course in this design, a professor uh, teaches a course. So a course can only have one professor teach it. It is baked into this design because if you put in the professor ID as part of the course table, you only are allowed one field to enter a course professor. If for some reason you wanted to allow multiple professors, then you need a bridge table with a course professor. So this is the design that we're going to be using in class. And I hope you uh, found this insightful.